accompanied by Tom Ricketts, Laura Ricketts, and Todd Ricketts. They said this day would never come. Here is something none of my predecessors ever got a chance to say. Welcome to the White House, the World Series champion, Chicago Cubs. would prefer to stand the whole time but sit down. I will say to the Cubs, it took you long enough. I mean, I've only got four days left. You're just making it a little up. Now listen, I, I made a lot of promises in 2008. We managed to fulfill a large number of them, but even I was not crazy enough to suggest that during these eight years we would see the Cubs but I did say that there has never been anything false about hope. Hope. The audacity of hope. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Now, listen. It, it, for those of you from Chicago who've known me a long time, uh, it is no secret that there's a certain South Side team uh, that, uh, you know, has, has my loyalty. Um, for me, the drought hasn't been as long. We had the 85 Bears, we had the Bulls run the 90s. I've hosted the Blackhawks a number of times. Uh, the White Sox did win just 11 years ago with Ozzy and Canerico and Burley. So, so I, I can't claim that I have the same just visceral joy <laughs> of some in this White House. <laughs> but Flotus is a lifelong Cubs fan. And I will tell you... She, she had to go to another event, but in the eight years that I've been here, I told the team this, in the eight years that I've been here, we've posted at least 50 teams, football, basketball, baseball, soccer, you name it. Michelle has never come <laughs> to a single event celebrating a champion until today. <laughs> and she came and shook hands and met with every one of these members of the Cubs organization and told a story about what it meant for her uh, to be able to see them win because she remembers coming home from school and her dad would be watching a Cubs game and the bond and the family, uh, the, the meaning that the Cubs had for her in terms of connecting with her father and why it meant so much to her. And I, I almost choked up listening to it. Uh, and it spoke, I think, to how people feel about this organization. And, and that it's been passed on generation after generation. And, and it's, it's, it, it, it's more than just sports. Um, and that is not just true for Flotus. My longest serving aide, Anita, is a Cubs fan. When they... When they uh, fan, fan is not enough. Uh, when they won that the next day, she said, "This is the best day of my life." And I said, "What about me winning the presidency? What about your wedding day?" She's like, "No, this is the day." 
my chief speechwriter, Cody Keenan, <laughs> Cubs fan. Um, in fact, there were a lot of sick days during the playoffs. <laughs> One of my staff members was caught being interviewed at a bar outside of Wrigley. <laughs> And, and we're watching him being interviewed. You remember Luke? And he's looking kind of sheepish about it. It's like, why aren't you in the office? But look, the truth is there was a reason not just uh, that people felt good about the Cubs winning. There was something about this particular Cubs team winning that people felt good about. Uh, for example, David Ross and I have something in common. We've both been on a year-long retirement party. <laughs> but, unlike Grandpa, my team has not yet brought me a scooter with a motor motorized golf caddy, but there are four days left. Maybe I'll get that. Um, the last time the Cubs won the World Series, Teddy Roosevelt was president. Uh, Albert Einstein, and, or was it uh, Thomas Edison was still alive. Uh, the first Cubs radio broadcast wouldn't be for almost two decades. We've been through world wars, cold war, depression, a space race, all manner of social and technological change. Uh, but during that time, those decades were also marked by Kill, uh, Phil Cavaretta and Ernie Banks, Billy Williams, who's here today. Ron Santo. Ferg. Ryan Sandberg. Dawson. Maddox. Grace. Those decades were punctuated by uh, Lee Elias Rance and Harry Carey's exuberance. Hey, hey, and holy cow, and <laughs> capped off by Go Cubs Go. So the first thing that made this championship so special for so many is, is that the Cubs know what it's like to be loyal and to persevere and to hope and to suffer and then keep on hoping. And, and it's, a, it's a generational thing. That's what you heard Michelle describing. Uh, people all across the city remember the first time a parent took them to Wrigley or memories of climbing in their dad's lap to watch games on WGN. Um, and that's part of the reason, by the way, why Michelle invited, uh, made sure that uh, Jose Cardinal was here, because that was her favorite player. <laughs> and she was describing... <laughs> Back then he had a big afro, and she was describing how she used to try to wear her hat uh, uh, over her afro the same way Jose did. You could see all that love this season in the fans who traveled to their dad's grave sites to listen to games on the radio, who wore their mom's jerseys to games, who covered the brick walls of Wrigley with love notes and chalk to departed fans whose lifelong faith was finally fulfilled. Uh, none of this, of course, would have happened uh, without the extraordinary contributions of the Ricketts family. Uh, Tom met his wife, Cece, in the bleachers of Wrigley about 30 years ago, which is about uh, 30 years longer than most relationships that begin there last. Uh, uh, our, our, our dear friend, uh, Laura Ricketts, met her wife, Brooke, in the ballpark as well. Uh, you know, Brothers and sisters, they, they turned this team around by hiring uh, what has to be one of the greatest, if not, I mean, he's still pretty young, so we'll see how long he keeps on going, uh, the greatest uh, general managers of all time, Theo Epstein. <laughs> And along with Jed Hoyer and uh, Jason uh, McLeod, uh, they, they did just an unbelievable job. Uh, Theo, as you know, is uh, his job is to, to quench droughts. 
Uh, 86 years in Boston, 108 in Chicago. Uh, he takes the reins of an organization that's wandering in the wilderness. He delivers them to the promised land. Um, I've talked to him about being DNC chair. <laughs> But he decided wisely to stick to baseball. <laughs> that brings me to the other thing that was so special about this championship, uh, and that's just the, the guys behind me, the team. Uh, they steamrolled the majors this year with a 103 uh, win record. Uh, all you had to know about this team was encapsulated in that one moment in game five, down three games to one, do or die, in front of the home fans when David Ross and John Lester turned to each other and said, I love you, man. I said, I love you, too. It was sort of like an uh, Obama-Biden moment. <laughs> and then you've got the manager, Joe Madden, uh, who... Let's face it. Let's face it. There are not a lot of coaches or managers who are as cool as this guy. <laughs> Look how he looks right now. That's cool. That's cool. You know, he used costume parties and his shagging wagon. And so he's got, I'm just saying, he's got a lot of, a lot of tricks to, uh, to motivate. Uh, but he's also a master of tactics and makes the right move at the right time. When to pinch it, when to pinch run, when to make it rain. Uh, <laughs> in Game 7 of the World Series, it was masterful. Uh, so he set the tone, but also some of the, the amazing players here set the tone. Uh, my fellow 44, Anthony Rizzo, yeah. who the heart of this team. Five years ago, he was part of the squad that lost 101 games. He stuck at it, led the National League in all-star votes this year. Uh, his business partner in the Brizzo Souvenir Company, <laughs> which delivers baseballs to fans in all parts of the bleachers, Chris Bryant. Yeah. Um, yes, Chris. This guy, this guy had a good year. <laughs> Yeah, you go from Rookie of the Year to being the MVP, you win the World Series, and then, like me, he marries up and comes to the White House. And he did all this just in 10 days. I mean, it took me a long time. So congratulations to the newlyweds, Jessica and Chris Bryant. Then you got these young guys like Baez and Russell. Uh, uh, Baez turning tagging into an art form. Russell becoming the youngest player to hit a World Series Grand Slam since Mickey Mantle. And you, you mix these amazing young talents with somebody like uh, David Ross, who for example, helped Anthony out of his glass case of emotions in Game 7. Um, but think about what Rossi did in his final season. Ca caught a no-hitter, surpassed 100 home runs for his career, including one in his last game ever. If there was ever a way to go out, this was it. Uh, and then you got Ben Zobris, who didn't get to come to the White House last year after winning it all with the Royals, but then hits 357 in the World Series, go ahead R, uh, RBI in the 10th inning of the Game 7, World Series MVP. I think he's earned his way here. And is apparently a good guy, because I asked his wife, she was in line before he was, I said, has he gotten a big head since he got the whole MVP thing? No, oh, he's so sweet, he's so humble. Is she just not? <laughs>
you, you owe her dinner tonight. <laughs> Extraordinary pitching staff, in, including Kyle Hendricks, the first Cub to lead the majors in ERA since 1938. <laughs> Kyle, in turn, was the only pitcher this year with a better ERA than John Lester, who racked up 19 wins. Jake Arrieta, 2015 Cy Young winner, stretched a 20-game win streak featuring two no-hitters across the past two seasons, then hit a home run in the uh, NLDS and won two games in the World Series. Uh, so apparently Pilates works. Michelle <laughs> says it does. So, and, then, and then finally, the, uh, the game itself. Um, and the series itself. Come back from a 3-1 deficit against uh, a great Cleveland Indians team, force what is widely considered uh, the greatest Game 7 of all time. Dexter Fowler becomes the first player to hit a leadoff home run in Game 7. <laughs> Javi Baez hits another leadoff in the fifth. David Ross becomes the older player, oldest player to knock one out in Game 7 as well. Um, Paul Schwarber, who's been hurt and hobbled, then suddenly he comes in, gets seven hits in the series, three in Game 7 all. And then you got the 10th inning, you've got the rain, God finally feeling mercy on Cubs fans. An entire game, an entire season, an entire century of hope and heartbreak, all coming down to a one-inning sprint. And then Zobris knocked in one, Montero knocked in another, Carl Edwards Jr., Mike Montgomery teamed up to shut the Indians down. And then at 12.47 a.m. Eastern Time, Brian looks like he's going to slip. Everybody's getting a little stressed. Tosses a grounder to Rizzo. Rizzo gets the ball, slips it in his back pocket. <laughs> which shows excellent, you know, situational awareness. <laughs> and, and suddenly, everything has changed. No more black cats, billy goats, ghosts. Flubbed grounders, Chicago Cubs are, are the champs. And on, on, on ESPN, you've got uh, Van Pelt saying one of the all-time great nights. You've got uh, Tim Kirkjian calling it the greatest night of baseball in the history of the game. Two days later, millions of people, uh, the largest gathering of Americans uh, that I know of in Chicago. Uh, and for a moment, our hometown becomes the very definition of joy. Um, so in Chicago, I think it's fair to say uh, you guys will be popular for a while. Uh, but in addition, they're also doing a lot of good work. Uh, Anthony Rizzo and John Lester raised money to help others beat cancer like they did. Under the, uh, under the Rigget families, Leadership, last year alone, Cub Charities supported charitable grants and donations of nearly $4 million that reached nearly 120,000 children and young adults across Chicagoland. Um, under their Let's Give initiative, Cubs staff, coaches, players, and spouses donated more than 1,500 hours of service last year to the community. And after the visit here today, they will head to Walter Reed to visit with some of our brave wounded warriors. So, so, so just to wrap up, um, you know, t today is uh, uh, today is, I think our our last official event, isn't it, at the White House uh, under my presidency. And it also happens to be a day that we celebrate one of the great Americans uh, of all time, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And later, uh, as soon as we're done here, Michelle and I are going to go over and do a service project, which is what we do every year to honor uh, Dr. King. And 
it is worth remembering um, because sometimes people wonder, well, why are you spending time on sports? There's other stuff going on. Um, that throughout our history, sports has had this power to bring us together even when the country is divided. Uh, sports has changed attitudes and culture in ways that seem subtle, but that ultimately uh, made us think differently about ourselves and who we were. Uh, it, it is a game and it is celebration, but there's a direct line between Jackie Robinson and me standing here. Uh, there is a direct line between people loving Ernie Banks and then the city being able to come together uh, and work together in one spirit. And I was in my hometown of Chicago on Tuesday uh, uh, for my farewell address and I said sometimes it's not enough just to change laws, you've got to change hearts. And, and sports has a way sometimes of changing hearts in a way that uh, politics or business doesn't. And you know, it, it, sometimes it's just a matter of us being able to escape and relax uh, from the, the difficulties of our days, but sometimes it also speaks to something better in us. And when you see this group of folks uh, of different shades and different backgrounds and coming from different communities and neighborhoods all across the country and then playing as one team and playing the right way and celebrating each other and being joyous in that, um, that tells us a little something about what America is and what America can be. So it is entirely appropriate that we celebrate the Cubs today uh, here in this White House on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday because uh, it helps direct us in terms of what this country has been and what it can be in the future. With that, one more time, let's congratulate the 2016 World Championship. Talk about a tough act to follow. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for inviting us. Um, we're all honored to be here today, and we appreciate you taking the time on, on such an important day, Martin Luther King Day, and during such an historic week, the last week of your distinguished presidency. Um, I was told on the way in here, actually, by our club historian that it's actually not the first time this franchise has visited the White House. It was 1888. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, we were known as the Chicago White Stockings, and uh, we stopped in here to visit President Grover Cl Cleveland, and apparently uh, the team demanded to, for a proclamation uh, to be named the best baseball team in the country. The president refused, and the team went on their way. And so, <laughs> here we are. We're going to make no such demands today, but we appreciate those kind words. Um, the president was so kind to recognize our, our three Hall of Famers here with us today uh, who are so synonymous with what it means to be a Cub, Billy Williams, Fergie Jenkins, Ryan Sandberg. And of, and of course, Jose Cardinal, who got the longest hug from the First Lady we've ever seen, her favorite player of all time. You're the MVP today. Um, and I want to one more time recognize all of the, uh, the Ricketts family who are here today. Uh, Tom, who's been such an ideal leader for our organization. Laura, who's been such a strong supporter of this president. And uh, Todd, who will embark on his journey uh, in public service with a significant role in the new administration next week. And Pete, who's busy uh, governing Nebraska, couldn't be here, but sends his best. <laughs> Um, finally, uh, we'd like to recognize um, all of our wives and significant others who do so much to support us behind the scenes and uh, our great front office who work so hard. To, uh, <laughs> so
So, Mr. President, as you alluded to in Cleveland on November 2nd and into the early morning of November 3rd, uh, this special group of players behind me in one of the greatest World Series games in history uh, ended the longest championship drought in American sports. And when Chris Bryant's throw settled into Anthony Rizzo's glove for the final out of Game 7, the victory uh, brought pride, joy, relief, and redemption to Cub fans everywhere, including many in the White House. Uh, thank you. So, many of you were there, but the city of Chicago erupted, uh, unified in a celebration that continues to this day. It was a thrilling, emotional time, and we think we even saw some White Sox fans smiling. <laughs> Which, Mr. President, brings us to you. Yes. Um, we know you may have certain allegiances to, to another team on the other side of town, um, but we know you're a very proud Chicagoan, and we know you're a better, wiser half. The First Lady has been a lifelong <laughs> and very loyal Cub fan, which we appreciate very much. Um, and of course, we have great faith in your intelligence, your common sense, your pragmatism, your ability to recognize a good thing when you see one. <laughs> So, Mr. President, with only a few days remaining in your tremendous presidency, we have taken the liberty here today of offering you a midnight pardon. <laughs> <laughs> For all your indiscretions as a baseball fan. <laughs> and so we welcome you with open arms today into the Cubs family. <laughs> To recognize this terrific conversion in this great day, uh, we have some gifts for you and your family. Um, first, Anthony, Anthony Rizzo uh, has graciously agreed to share his number 44 with the 44. There you go. There you go. And, it, and if, you're, if you're still not comfortable putting a Cubs jersey on this one, just says Chicago. Right. So you're good with that one. Uh, second, we have uh, at historic Wrigley Field, we have a center field scoreboard that's actually an historic landmark, and so we hope the National Park Service won't mind, but we took down a tile for you, number 44, which... Uh, <laughs> very few people have one of those. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, we also wanted you to know that as a new fan, uh, you have, a, you have some, some catching up to do, uh, and you've been busy the last eight years, and your family as well, so uh, Laura Ricketts is here to present you with a lifetime pass to Wrigley Field for you and your family. Nice. I love how it says, yeah. non-transferable. Yeah. It's, it's strictly, uh, it's just an emolument. Can you imagine if somebody walks up? Sorry. <laughs> you don't have to bring it with you. <laughs> and finally, uh, every time we win a game in Chicago, we fly the W flag, as you know. So we brought one for you, signed by the entire team, and we'd love for you to fly it at your new library, which we, we plan do to so. do our very best to support Thank along the way. So <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. President, thank you for the dignity and integrity with which you've served this country for the last eight years, uh, for your tremendous service to Chicago and Illinois before that, and for hosting us here today. We wish you all the best and look forward to seeing you at Wrigley Field. Thank you. Thank you. Well, everybody, the, uh, thank you so much. Let me say... Let me say, first of all, best swag I've gotten as president. 
represented right here. Uh, and l let me also say on behalf of uh, a lot of folks here in the White House, uh, uh, you know, you've brought a lot of joy to a lot of people here, and, and we're grateful. I know my former chief of staff, now mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, you know, folks like Dick Durbin, uh, you know, and, and uh, our, we got a whole congressional delegation here. Our, I see Lisa Madigan, my dear friend. Uh, you know, just a lot of people uh, have, uh, uh, have been rooting for you for a long time. So even though it will be hard for me, Fergie, to wear a jersey, <laughs> uh, do know that uh, among Sox fans, I'm the Cubs' number one fan. <laughs> All right, let's try this first. That was the Chicago Cubs at the White House, the 2016 World Series champion with uh, President Obama. He congratulating them, and uh, they just having a little fun together. And they, he got some pretty cool swag. So even though he's a Chicago White Sox fan, he is still the number one uh, fan of the Cubs among the Sox fans. <laughs> But we love our Chicago Cubs. They did it, y'all. It's, it's nice to see uh, that they get a uh, get the President Obama to just love and bless on them. Um, it's so funny that um, he mentioned that Michelle Obama is a Chicago Cubs fan, although he is a Chicago White Sox fan. And it's so cool that uh, he came on out and uh, congratulated them, which we knew he would do anyway. Amen. Oh, man, it was, this was just such an awesome event. So definitely uh, listen to this over and over again and share with a friend. You heard it on LUTG Radio's WKKP Digital Broadcasting, Chicago, Illinois. This is Kathy Brocks.